doing a quick video on the alternator not working on the 6L. Uh, I need it bad, so I did some totally redneck stuff to the radiator I won't mention uh, until I get a chance to actually find out if it's a radiator problem or if I have a blown motor or if it's a, you know, EGR cooler, all that crap. So in the meantime, I found um, that my alternator wasn't charging. I got a brand new alternator. I did have two dead batteries, but that wasn't the problem. So I have two new batteries from good old Big W. And um, what I did find seems to be fairly common with these trucks. If you've got a good alternator and both your batteries are working and you got some weird crap showing up on your dash and your alternator won't charge, this may be one of your problems. And so this is a common place where uh, mice like to chew wires when your truck sits for a while. So I will uh, get you guys in there and get you zoomed in. Um, and at the outset, you can buy these connectors as a pigtail from Ford. They offer all their connectors with pigtails. I may not have needed it, and it was 50 bucks from the dealer. And they had one in, like, Tennessee or something. I'm out in Oregon. So uh, after buying it, I wasn't real thrilled with myself. I probably could fix this without it. We'll see. I'm going to try to take the connector apart. If you have to, you can buy it for 50 bucks. So, I feel a little stupid, but I do stupid shit. So, so well, anyways. Um, so, we'll get into it. So, where we're talking about, with the battery out, you can see... Um, well, you can't see it. Let me get you guys a little lower. You can see all this fluffy, wonderful stuff that the mouse decided to chew. This didn't... Uh, nothing got hurt except this one connector that I can see and I've seen it it's this connector here and it basically dead ends a bunch of wires but there's a green and red wire that needs to loop around I've got the other component in the house it's fine so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull you guys off of here and we'll get down close and so you can see back there where it's chewed you can see right uh, right here all these wires have been chewed off the back and we'll go up above it now so we're going to keep you guys in the same orientation so the video doesn't flip over and you can see right here that this is chewed in half so I have to take this connector apart I gotta get it out of the harness and I gotta get, extend these wires or get them to the where I can uh, where I can maybe plug them back into the harness. So what you're going to find is there's some body connectors like this one right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull those all along here, down here. And we're going to try to get this harness loose um, from the body right here so that I can get that pulled out and get to it. Talk to you guys in a bit. So, uh, and if I didn't mention it, the um, battery stuff's 8mm. So get these loose one at a time here. I might have to get a different kind, guys. Somebody had some janky fuse action in here. You can see the ground wires just stuffed in over here because they're a bunch of idiots. Alright guys, um, I can actually get to this from here. Just trying to wiggle this thing out. All right, so I got the connector out. I am going to attempt to take the back of it off and work on it in the house. So, see you guys back inside. All right, guys. Uh, I took the time to draw up the diagram from the back of the plug. So this is looking at the chewed off side. So we've got a white wire, we've got a blank, I should have filled that in, this is a dead hole, 
and the black ones are blanks. We got the two green wires that actually get connected together on the other side of the plug. Two more dead holes, purple, should, uh, that could be, P could be purple or pink, but it's pur purple, and then yellow. So white, purple, and yellow all deadhead in the plug. I fooled around a little bit before I got you guys on here. So the back of the plug, this comes out. I just used a small like um, glasses screwdriver and slipped it in there and pried it out. So this pries out. Wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. This is the bottom part is part of the harness. And I didn't know how it came off, so I didn't know how to slip it off. You pry it down and slip it forward although it's not as easy as it looks definitely could not have done this in car uh, I did this once already get a little bigger screwdriver out so I don't bend it I think I was pushing the wrong way too Come on. Okay, there we go. So this needs to go back in the harness. Um, I have a, I couldn't find it. I have a toolkit somewhere that gets that's the plugs for all this. This front piece here just pries out gently. So that wedge slips out and there's a top and a bottom to it. There's a little detent that goes down. So the plug's like this, little detents on the bottom goes down. And then the way these slip out is you just, there's little keepers in there and you just slip it in between the keeper and I'll, I'll draw you a diagram. So there's little plastic keepers in there that look like this. And then this is the front. And here's your little barrel connector and it goes out the back and you slip it in between the keeper and it should come out and what I thought was white is white with a yellow stripe so this should be W slash yellow and I'm gonna get all of these. I don't know what type of pin this is. I wish I did. They're probably real cheap to order. I will try to look it up for you guys. Sorry, I'm concentrating. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get on the internet and see if I can find these connectors. Um, like I said, I ordered the pigtail and feel kinda dumb about that. It just depends on whether I can find these barrel connectors or not. So. I am going to go look this up and I will get back to you guys in a little bit. Alright guys, we're back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take apart some of the stuff that doesn't need to be taken apart. Like this and some other stuff in here so you guys can see what you're doing, what I'm doing. So I'll go ahead and get this off real quick. If I could go the right direction. Um, grounding is really important on the 6.0 and so if I was a Ford owner I would look up some of the articles on grounding it's really important the way that the grounding scheme on Ford's is grounding through the threads not on the contact with the body that's why these connectors are made the way that they are. You can look up a whole series on the way that these are made. But um, I'm getting this stuff out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing here. That doesn't seem to want to go back in. And I will be putting uh, dielectric on these when I get done here. Um, so the other thing I'm going to take off is this thing and then this. And that's it. The thing I just took off, the ground was an 8 millimeter. Um, these are 10 millimeter here. 
Yeah, it's not morning, buddy. Don't want to lose that. Looks like that could have stayed on there. So again, you don't need to take this off. I'm getting it out of the way so that you guys can see the harness better. You gotta be careful because these are um, these are not wires. These are um, vacuum lines. Now the goal here is didn't have to take this one all the way out. The goal here is to get this wiring harness up where I can get to it. Um, on this one, this top bolt here, can you guys see that? The top bolt here, um, you can just use that regular 10. The bottom bolt, I had to use an extension and go behind it. So the setup I had for that bottom bolt was something like this set up and then I actually went behind this motor um, let's see if you guys can see that so I will take you off here for a second and this is the alignment I had to do in order to get that out so um, that's the setup there. Be careful with that as well. It's easy to bust. Um, it's easy to bust that off and bust that off. So just be really careful. All right. So um, I already had these loose, so I didn't have to take them off. Now I was looking up loom tape and I could not find this orange Ford tape. I don't, they're using some kind of stretchy material, almost like it's balloon type material. And this connector comes out by lifting up on it. And then you can just pull that back out of the road. So I already got this loom loose. So you guys should be able to see it fairly well. I'm going to use, um, put these back so I don't lose them. For a lot of my electrical projects, I have a scalpel. So that's what I'm going to use to get this open here. The scalpel. to be very careful when I do that. Now they've wrapped this um, in, in place, meaning they've wrapped a joint into it so that it can't pull back. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut that loose. So I'll cut through that and rewrap it later. And this tape that they use, you can get from a number of manufacturers. Um, it's a low... Um, you can even get a 3M product. It's a low tack tape, meaning it doesn't leave hardly any adhesive on the wires. You can use electrical tape, but it's not very good uh, temperature wise. So, I'll get this up and out of here. I can see one more there.
And of course this body panel thing is going to come loose here, so I'll have to retape that back down. Yeah, I don't know what this is. It's some kind of zero tack self bonding tape of some kind. Wish I knew what it was. I'd like to buy some of it. If there's any Ford engineers that watch this video, uh, that'd be great if you'd let me know what kind of tape this is. It's pretty stretchy. All right, that should be enough. So I was looking for the connectors for this and TE Connectivity makes a similar connector, which is actually made by um, Tyco, but I couldn't find the exact connector. So I'm gonna try to reuse the old ones by soldering them. So I've got enough, um, enough material here that I can get to it with a soldering gun and all that good stuff. It's not going to be as good as the original connection, but I can't help it. The mouse did a wonderful job on this thing. And really, the only two connectors that are important here are the um, two green wires. Those get spliced on the other end of the connector. So if you're doing this on the cheap, you can actually just put a male and female connector in here and splice these two green wires. Everything else is deadheaded in the connector. These go nowhere. I'm assuming it's for some sort of test at Ford, don't know. So I'm gonna go ahead and splice these back in and then uh, I'll move the connector back just a little bit on the loom so that it's in the same spot. Uh, talk to you guys in a little bit. All right guys, I'm back. If you're like me and you wanna do this right, um, you have to push the wires through first. So your two green with red stripes are gonna go you're pushing them from outside the connector in. So it's gonna say Ford on one side of this. You're gonna push them from the outside in. You have to have this on before you solder your pins back on. Yellow with white goes top left. Yellow goes bottom right. And then purple goes second one in on the bottom. And you gotta get these all the way through and get them you know, where you can manage them. So I'm going to pull them down a little ways and then I'll adjust it later. So these are your connectors and then you're going to strip them. Now I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, you're going to have to be really careful not to drop these down somewhere. And if you notice, how okay, well can you guys see? Uh, right there is not terrible. Focus on my finger. So all this crimping you can't fix. There's a tiny little pocket right here where I'm going to try to solder the new wire into and fill that with solder. I really don't know if this is going to work. It's going to get hot. I'm going to have to figure out how to hold it temporarily. So we'll see if this works or not. Be back in a bit. All right, guys, I don't know how well you can see this, but um, I'm gonna use this as a pointer. So what I did is I crimped just behind um, the end of the crimp, and um, the sun is really kind of trash in this, but basically it left me this little end right here to actually make a new crimp, and then I'm gonna put the solder in here. So you got to leave just this micro amount, we're talking like a 32nd, a 64th, just enough to hold the wire in place while you're soldering. I used a flat blade eyeglass screwdriver to open that up. And then what I'm going to use to crimp it back down on the new wire is some Harbor Freight mini pliers here. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and see if I can get it to crimp down. Oh, and we got to strip the wire too. So we're going to use the connector to see how much of the wire we need to strip. And it looks as if we're talking about maybe an eighth. We're going to go a little more than that. 
you do not want to drop these connectors. They're basically irreplaceable, so do whatever you need to do not to lose them. You're on three minutes, so I'll try to keep my hands out of the way the best I can. I gotta take my glasses off a little too close. And then we're gonna Okay, that's going to be enough to hold the wire. And then I'm going to come back and try to solder it real quick. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and get them all crimped first and then do my soldering. If I can. That's pretty mechanically crimped on there. Be right back, guys. All right, guys, we got them all on there. We're now to the all-important soldering phase. Uh, I got this um, Amazon soldering gun at supposedly 200 degrees. So we're going to go for it here. I'm not a very steady person, so maybe I should use my writing hand to solder with. Soldering's like welding. you got to be comfortable. Okay, that one's done. So is that one. So far, so good. I'm trying to get these so that the holes are facing me when I'm soldering. You gotta be able to see what I'm doing here. Alright guys, so now we're going to put the connector back together, so if I look at my diagram, um, let's see, white with yellow goes up top, which is this one. And then we've got a blank space, and then we've got two green and reds. So we got to get these all together at once. And then we've got um, purple and yellow on the same side. So purple and yellow go here. Green and green go up here. And that's fun loading that up. Let's see if I can make it going with a pair of pliers. Nope, I gotta fix the solder ball on that. Dang it. I was really hoping that would go in. All right, guys, let's see if this thing will hurry up and heat up.
All right, I think I got it. Yep, that did it. So now we're going to push the back on. You guys going? Yep. We're going to get this back this back um, seal back in. Okay, we got that seated and we're going to get the front connector back in. And remember the wedge goes down. And we are done, other than insulation. So I'm going to have to order some wire wrap for the truck, but I'm going to go ahead and get this assembled back together. And we'll see if it starts. Alright guys. You can't even hardly see it down in there. Probably can't see it at all. But it's fixed. So it's charging at 13.99. I'm going to take it for a drive, and if it fixed it, I will talk to you guys later. As always, I hope this helps somebody. Oh, if you've stayed to the end and you're a Ford engineer, I would love to know what those pin connector types are. As always, talk to you guys later. Hope this helps someone. Bye.